Hello and welcome back to another budget and leg video. Now we've got another part on this Toyota. We are doing the back brakes, uh, Toyota Aris. Uh, we are doing the back pads and discs because you might not be able to see yet, but on the first video I showed why we're doing it. Um, so we're going to whip off the wheel and we're going to see why we're doing it. If I got the right side socket, we'll be doing that. The reason I had the wrong size socket is because the far wheel has two different size lug nuts on it. Um, anyway, yeah, just more things I'm seeing with this car. <laughs> Only the best snow tire on it. Don't know why people put snow tires on the car. In Ireland, it's pointless. Well, I know why they did it, because it was cheap and they just wanted to get rid of it. But anyway, if you can see, get some light on. You can see why we're changing it. We are only braking a little bit here and a little bit there. I'm guessing 15% of this we're actually braking on. Now, when you compare it to the far side, see how shiny this is. This is completely shiny. I don't know if this torch is in the right place. And you can see the difference is huge. This passed an NCT test, and you're telling me there is no imbalance between these two. This is breaking on all of it. This is breaking maybe 15% of it. There has to be some sort of imbalance, but yet it passed. It's only this side that is bad, but what we have to do is replace both sides. You can't just replace one side, so you have to replace both sides. Right, so what we want to do is take off the caliper first, and we need a 14 mil spanner or socket, doesn't really matter, whatever you... Always best to crack both of them first. There we go. Before you try and take them out. If you completely take one out and you try and crack the top one, the, the caliper tends to move and it just makes it a lot harder for you to get it out. Now with this one, the handbrake is used from the caliper as well, as well as the foot brake. On a lot of Toyotas you have shoes inside the actual disc, which you have to be careful. There's a special way of taking them off. I've shown that in other videos. But in this one, we just have a normal caliper with the handbrake cable attached to it. Makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to change. So we're not complaining. So that removes the caliper out of the way. Now, like I said, we've got a handbrake cable here. So we can just kind of leave this flopping because the handbrake cable is actually holding this. You can, you can tie it up with a bungee cord or something. But with this type, you're not putting any pressure on the brake line whatsoever. Um, Always a good thing to check your pins. And as you can see, the pins in this are absolutely seized. Let's get you around here. Right, so there we have the two pins where the caliper actually runs on. And as the brakes wear down, they move in and out. These are completely and utterly seized, as you can see there. So we would be taking them out and cleaning them anyway, but it's a good thing to always check them. And when they're seized, you're not having proper brakes. It can cause your pads to wear funny. It can cause all sorts of problems. It looks like someone has changed this caliper recently because they may be thinking it was a caliper problem. This caliper looks really quite new um, and not realizing it was maybe the pins because if the pin sees, it's the same as the caliper sees and it just won't work. And that's what it looks like to me. Someone has changed this and uh, kind of maybe got it wrong. And when it was the pins at fault. So I'm just going to get these out, which I'm struggling with one hand. The backside, to be fair, was okay. Nothing wrong with that. Still plenty in the pad, but the front one is gonna be a problem. It's gonna have the mark of the caliper on it. Hope I'm not getting in the way. Now, look at that. There you go. Just look how damaged that is. Now actually what that looks like to me, it looks like someone's wedged something in there. You can see the big dip taken out of it there. I reckon someone's thought the caliper has seized in this. They've got a screwdriver in there. They've hit it in because that looks like a screwdriver mark to me. Completely and utterly destroyed the pad, which has then destroyed the disc. Because the problem is, there's a big lip on this disc now. You can't just put uh, new pads on it because it'll just it won't it'll wear funny. It's just too dangerous. Um, they've replaced the caliper, and of course, it's still not working properly because the pins have seized. 
That's what it looks like to me. So whoever did that, just, yeah, there's just no really words for it. Unbelievable. Right, I'm just really struggling for light at the minute. It's just been a bit of a nightmare. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the carrier, is essentially what holds the caliper on. There's two 14mm bolts in behind here. Um, I just can't seem to get the light in a good enough position so you can see what I'm doing. It's just frustrating. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do it off camera. You can't really see. i just get you in here a bit better. Now, you can see the two bolts I'm on about here and the one just up there. They're the two I'm going to take off. I might actually be able to hold the camera. No. <laughs> I just cannot get the light to work. I'm going to take off them and then I'll reposition the camera and the light and we'll continue. Right, so we have the carrier in the vise. These are the two bolts we've taken off. I just couldn't quite show you. These are the two little pins and they're just... They, they should go up and down really quite easy. Oh, that one's actually moving now. <laughs> um, it should go up and down really easy, even a bit easier than this. And the way to do it, it can be really annoying. You just have to get the spanner and move them side to side and move them. And then as you're moving it, try and lift them up at the same time, which doesn't always work. But if you can try and we'll just pull this one out first. And what we need to do, and to be fair, that one is really quite good. Normally they're just caked full of, well, they're just caked full of old grease that's compacted. I use Molly grease because Molly grease doesn't really compact and it's really good. It's designed for heat and it's really good stuff. Do not use copper grease in these. Copper grease is like sandpaper and it'll just destroy them. Um, this, oh, there we go. Again, not too bad considering um just pulled the rubber out so let's get that back in let's make sure that's gone back in right yeah not bad at all i was expecting worse considering that was seized so all i'm gonna do i've shown all my other videos i don't even have to rub that down because there's just nothing on there so i'm just gonna get molly grease put these back down and at least that's done it's high performance molly grease that i'm using just dip it in make sure it doesn't wipe it all off as you put it in which it hasn't Put it down and you can see the difference now just a million times better. Same thing again, make sure it doesn't wipe it off, put it in and there we go. Now that's done. Now what we need to do is just take off the disc. And I know watching some of you guys in America have a real big problem with rust. We don't really have that problem with rust over here. We do, don't get me wrong, our cars do rust, but nowhere near as severe as, as you can. I've seen some of these discs being really difficult to get off. And, you know, even with serious tools, it takes, you know, it can take 10, 15 minutes to take off. We're quite lucky here. A few slaps of the hammer. Well, I say that, watch this one stick. And there we go. It really is as simple as that. You have to be very careful not to hit the studs. And there we go. Perfect on that side. When I flip it over, you can just see how bad it is. And it's only breaking on the shiny bits. Always a good thing now. Just give your wheel bearing a check. Just to make sure that's all good. No problem there. And we'll bang on the new parts. Now, when you get these brakes, they come with, they come with an anti-rust thing all over them and you need to get that off, brake cleaner, wipe it on both sides and it'll take it off. Obviously, measure them up against your old discs, make sure they fit before you go anywhere, because if they don't fit, you're gonna be in trouble. Clean all the stuff off, the stuff, it stops them from rusting when they're in storage. Once they're on the car, they will rust when they're outside in a few minutes, but you go down the road and it breaks all the rust off in a few seconds, so don't worry about it. Uh, just need to get the brake carrier again. These were the two 14 mils that are holding it on. Get it the right way. Give it a good wire brush. So all these clips here, you can buy the, the clips again new. Um, it's no harm to be honest, but we don't need to do that. They're all good. Line everything up. Put both of them in before you tighten anything fully because it can, as you can see, there's one in. You can see the movement we've got in here. So you need to line both of these up first. Tighten them by hand. 
These were really tight coming off. I mean, they were stupidly tight. So I'm guessing about a medium, medium grunt for this. Ooh. Mm. That's about a medium grunt there. Same again for the top. Remember, when you do a grunt, it's important to get the facial inspections right because it won't work otherwise. So, there we go, that's, that's a medium grunt. Absolutely fine for this. Now, this is where the copper grease comes in. These are our new pads. As you can see, one of them has got this kind of metal tab on it and the other one doesn't. The metal tab is a wear indicator and it goes on the inside of the disc and make sure you have one on each side. As you can see, once the pad wears down too much, this scratches the disc and it makes one horrible noise but at least it tells you to check your brakes because if it's left too much longer, you will then need to put discs on again. Um, you know, once these pads are worn down, these discs are still going to be fine. So it saves you money. It's one of them noises you really don't want to um, ignore. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting copper grease on the tips of the pads first. And the reason why I just do it like that is because when I hold my finger like that, I don't want to transfer grease onto the back of there because if there's grease there, you're not going to be breaking. So slide that in to the retaining clips and now I can get it and literally go across the back of it. Simples. So we'll do the same again. Just put it on the two little tabs. Put it in the clips. And there we go. Now, this is what's called a wine back piston. Let me get you a lot closer so you can see. This piston, hope you can see that there now. There we Let's get the light in. There we go. You see that? This piston does not just push back. You can see there's four little hollows out and it needs to be wind, wind, wind. It needs to be wound back. Um, you can't just push it because you won't, you'll just do damage. So it's very simple. What we are using is an air wind back tool. This is the connection for this particular brake. As you can see, it's got four little, four little legs sticking out of it. And what this does is, as you press the air, it obviously, as you can see, it pushes the piston, keeps pressure on the piston. And with this lever down here, this will actually twist, as you can see, and I can go left and right because some uh, calipers are left and are right depending on the car and it's a really handy piece of kit so I'm just going to line this up here first if I can there we go that's lined up all I've done is press the trigger where's my torch this light situation is just really annoying on this video hopefully you can see it's, you're not going to be able to see too much but all i've done is i've pressed i've pressed it in so that's now putting pressure on the system and all i'm going to do is turn the lever at the top now you do have to be careful not to um see the there's a little rubber boot on the brake piston and you want to be careful not to twist that around um so all you do is push it all the way in just start to twist a little bit at the end I just push it back get it straight you can put a little bit of brake lube in it you can see it's now fine just that now it's now it's absolutely fine a little bit of brake lube in it just to do it release the pressure and there we go there's loads and loads of different um, brake winding tools back there you can buy some like everything are more expensive than others the air ones do tend to be more, but they're just so much easier to use. Memory card's about to die. So I'll be quick and just put these two bolts in. And then, uh, well, my memory card's about to die. All I've got to do is put these two bolts back in, put the wheel back on, and it's done. But rather than trying to, rather than trying to get another memory card, I'll just leave it at this. It's, it's really is. 
it's simple really right what i forgot to say as you can see i'm editing the video behind me is uh, when you do your brakes always pump your pedal what i suggest when you do one side at a time pump your pedal first to pull the piston back because if you don't do this and this and especially if you put all four brakes on your car you're going to go out your garage you're going to press your brake your pedals are going to go all the way to the floor and you're going to have no brakes so after every every time you've done a side pump your brake pedal with the engine off until it goes hard at least you'll know then when you actually come to drive your car you're going to have brakes also it's a good thing to just take off your brake reservoir cap um just to kind of it's easier to push back pistons and stuff then um so yeah it's very very important you do that pump your pedal after every brake sorted so we have a few more things to do on this and there might be more which we'll do in the future we'll see but hope it helps thumbs up subscribe and all that links up here links down there but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted